you everyone um, for being here tonight and welcome to the MOAD Open Mic. Uh, my name is Nia McAllister and I'm the Visitor Experience Manager at the Museum of the African Diaspora. And as we welcome everyone tonight, um, I just want to be mindful of the times that we're living in. And as we gather here tonight, it's essential to acknowledge the multiple pandemics that we're experiencing that are essentially that are killing us at this moment, um, including the ongoing systemic violence against Black people. And so as we gather in this space, this is a place for us to recognize our grief, our anger, our exhaustion, and also to seek joy and comfort in each other's company. And so all are welcome in this space, and I'm excited to hear from everyone this evening. Um, and it is of the utmost importance that we center respect in this space, and we continue to amplify and create spaces um, for Black voices. And so before we get to the logistics of this evening's open mic, I also want to acknowledge the spaces that we're occupying. And though we're gathering virtually tonight, many of us are settlers, immigrants, or descendants of those forcibly brought to this continent. And our institutions were founded upon exclusions and erasures of the indigenous peoples whose land we are located on. It is with deep respect that MOAD acknowledges that even in this virtual space, our people, our work, our network servers, they are all on native lands. And so we thank the indigenous people of the Bay Area who have stewarded this land throughout many generations. And so with that, I'm extremely grateful to again, have this community and healing through art and open mic. And it really warms my heart to hear people say that they plan their weeks around this and continue to see familiar faces at these events. So for those who are new or those who are joining us again, who are frequent, to this space. Um, I ask that throughout this event you do keep your microphones on mute um, if you are not the person reading. Um, however, because open mics are so interactive and vulnerable and um, that type of affirmation is important, I do encourage people to use the chat features, give people air snaps or claps um, to really respond to people's poetry and music and everything that's going to be shared this evening. Um, so please feel free to write lines that speak to you in the chat um, and affirm each other throughout this event. Um, so with that I will also be posting the uh, lineup in the chat in just a second after I finish this introduction. And then before each reader, I will announce um, the upcoming reader. Um, if for any reason I either skip you or you join after I've called your name, please just message me individually in the chat and I'll make sure that you're added into the lineup. Um, and I'm excited. So this first half of the event is going to be um, our, half of our open mic readers. And then I'm excited to have our feature of this evening, Samuel Gedichu, who will be reading midway through the event. And then we'll wrap up with the remaining open mic readers. Um, and then uh, the last part that I want to acknowledge is that uh, MOAD is doing extremely amazing programming. This is just one of the many programs we do. And so any and all support is welcome. Um, and we'll be putting information in the chat later about ways to donate and continue to support the work that we do. Um, so with that, um, I will post the lineup. This will be the first half of the lineup, actually. Um, and to kick us off this evening, I would like to invite Norm Maddox up to the mic. Welcome, Norm. Hey. Okay, good, good, good. I'm so glad to be here. And um, I'm gonna dive right in. These pieces don't really have a name, but um, you'll get my feel. What follows is the cascade of word images streaming behind my sleep closed eyelids. I watched them thinking they were part of a dream until it sounded like the voice of my muse speaking to me engaging me to wake up so I could write them down. Falling out of clear blue skies, catching the meteors before they explode, transforming them to falling stars, surrounding Mother Earth and Father Sky like a shield of invisible armor, catching the flaming stardust in the palm of your heart, transforming universal juju to an elegant, eloquent plasma injectable, transfusable through arteries, como rios hasta los charcos de Burinquin, feeling fly like spit off the grito, silent llantos echo across the shadows on the horizon, actions like primal instincts, living an unworded field manual, 
for the apprentice watching how it's done. Needs fulfilled without request. Superpowers born out of filial piety for your ancestors, vulnerable to the flows of life, yielding control over outcomes. Faith in what father knows best before and after we're gone, vacating the premises for the joy and the miseries that follow in the wake of a love supreme. This one does have a name and it's called No Better Time. The present is now, not the now of before or after, not the now of yesterday or tomorrow. Do not be lulled to sleep believing there will be a day after today. Do not get caught up in the memories of the day before yesterday. Procrastinating on living now, hoping for better conditions to live happily ever after, putting living on hold, rubbing hands together, warming the globe against record cold, melting glaciers while oceans rise, islands blown off the map, changing geography from the sky there are no borders. Dams breaking, floods of hate causing fires to burn like revenge for the drought. El Nino y la Nina, ocean currents like mischievous children looking for shrinking tropical forests where fresh water used to be recycled, refreshed, refreshed and replenished for there to be enough for all of us. Now is the rainy day we've been saving for. Imagine human error being the wake up call that puts us all to sleep. Imagine the one human's error being the off switch to any enlightened vision of tomorrow. Raise the words out of the throats of our legacy. We are the ones we have been waiting for. Ancestors dreaming for centuries have conjured us to be here now. Their dream is not for us to be suffering, voiceless, with no authority over our lives. We are expected to bring the brilliance of our collective vision to bear on the darkness ignorance has wrought. A rude awakening for many, realizing how the power of love and nonviolence will be a new kind of trauma. You know, the revolution will not be televised because the media will not shine a camera on a heart that is healing, not bleeding, sharing true love fiercely. I'll say. Those are beautiful. Thank you so much, Norm. Next up, I would like to invite Trisha Koshe up to the mic. Welcome. Greetings. Thank you so much uh, for pronouncing my name correctly, my last name. <laughs> and I give greetings to everyone in the Bay Area. That's my second hometown. I have many hometowns. That's my second one. So today is the birthday of Patrice Lumumba from the Congo. If you don't know who he is, um, Google him. He should have been the president of uh, the Congo the way Nelson Mandela was the president of South Africa. This one is called, He Who Is Free, No Prison Can Bound. Can you hear me correctly, loudly? I turned off the alarm, went to the living room, woke you up and turned on the TV. We cried and hugged as we watched Nelson Mandela walk hand in hand with Winnie. It was the day a students had prayed and protested for. It was here. Years later, it was here. The divestment sanctions and the Cubans turned the tide. The rest is history. Amanla, new beginnings. So we thought. That legacy is still being written and fought. Freedom ain't free if the land and its people still locked in a cycle of poverty, gentrification, and violence. Little did I know you were in your own prison of your own making, one that I would not see you walking out of even 30 years later. 
The physical bars branded your bloated face and glassy eyes. The refracted memory of you passed out in my living room, glass bottles strewn about like a libation gone way wrong. The stench of your imprisonment reeks through your pores of just one more drink. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for sharing that piece. Next up to the mic, I would like to invite Juvi Ariola Headley, welcome. Thank you. I'm here from the other coast. I'm in South Florida on Seminole land want to acknowledge that and say to y'all that in this particular time I've been looking for ways to highlight joy and so the poem I want to read to you today is my attempt to one of my attempts to do that and it's called superhero origin story it's Easter morning and though I hear I'm as likely to catch hell as be saved if I cross a church threshold, I find myself tripping over five young girls, not a one yet 16, belting right on King Jesus. To my mind, the blackest hymn ever played, and oh, my sweet children, if you could just hear how those four sopranos and altos, a pair of each, race each other up a sainted ladder of notes and half notes aiming not to reach the heavens, but by grace to blast open heaven's door. So as for all of us to taste a minute of that great getting up morning, while the fifth sister does the yeoman's work, holding that bass line steady, making sure that ladder don't so much as wobble and as if on cue, the firmament above me commences to burst and spill forth all over this green and gray earth, and a simpler man might have thought this some rogue omen, some bad juju, but I have seen the song that rain brings, and for a moment, for one infinite instant, I think my own tears are done with down and falling upward, like my open palms, to meet the rain for a hallelujah. And as I'm moved myself to twirl, to spin, to wail the words, ride on King Jesus, no man cannot hinder me. I'm quick corrected by a neighbor. It's thee, not me. Hmm. I'm not so sure, friend. I hear that song, that unending crescendo feels like I'm the one who's unbreakable. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that piece. That was a beautiful imagery. Thank you. Next up to the mic, I'd like to invite T. Watts. Welcome, T. Hey, thank you, Nia. Hello, everyone. Thanks to Moad for another excursion into our individual and collective truths. I'm going to read two today, and I was, I was inspired by the last open mic when Sister Tracy Bartlow read the Nikki Giovanni piece. I said, wow, I would like to read one of, one of my most favorite poems of all time by Ishmael Reed. It's called, I'm a Cowboy in the Boat of Ra. And it's prefaced by the following, the devil must be forced to reveal any such physical evil, potions, charms, fetishes, etc., still outside the body, and these must be burned. Rituale Romanum, published 1947, <clears throat> excuse me, endorsed by the coat of arms and introductory letter from Francis Cardinal Spellman. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra. Sidewinders in the saloons of fools bit my forehead like, oh, the untrustworthiness of Egyptologists who do not know their trips. Who was that dog-faced man they asked the day I rode from town? 
school moms with halitosis cannot see the Nefertiti fake chipped on the run by slick Germans, the hawk behind Sonny Rollins' head, the ritual beard of his ax, a longhorn winding its bells through the field of reeds. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra. I bedded down with Isis, lady of the boogaloo, dove deep down in her horny, stuck up her wells far ago in a daring midday getaway. Start grabbing the blue, I said from the top of my double crown. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra, Ezra Charles of the Chisholm Trail. Took up the bass, but they blew off my thumb. Alchemist in ringmanship, but a sucker for the right cross. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra, bamoosed from the temple, I bide my time. The price on the wanted poster was a going down. Outlaw alias cop my stance, and the moody greenhorns were making me dance, while my mouth's shooting iron got its chambers jammed. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra, boning up in the old west. I bide my time. You should see me pick off these tin cans, whipper snappers. I wrote. I write the Motown long plays for the comeback of Osiris, make them up when stars stare at sleeping steer out here near the campfire. Women arrive on the backs of goats and throw themselves on my buoy. I am a cowboy in the boat of Ra, Lord of the Lash, the Loop Guru Kid, half-breed son of Pisces and Aquarius. I hold the souls of men in my pot. I do the dirty boogie with scorpions. I make the bulls keep still and was the first swinger to grape the taste. I am a cowboy in the boat, of, excuse me. I'm a cowboy in his boat, Pope Joan of the Pitara. Come here a minute, will you, doll? Be a good girl and bring me my buffalo horn of black powder. Bring me my headdress of black feathers. Bring me my bones of juju snake. Go get my eyelids of red paint. Hand me my shadow. I'm going into town after set. I'm a cowboy in the boat of Ra. Look out, set. Here I come, set. To get set. To sunset, set. To unseat, set. To set down, set. Usurper of the royal couch. Imposter, radio of Moses Bush. Party pooper, oh hater of dance, vampire outlaw of the Milky Way. That was Ishmael Reed. And I have a short one by me. And even though it's the beginning of summer, this one is called Christmas in the Carport, subtitled Karanga's Folly for Fern P. White. The Christ madness broke, in crowd swayed, leaning on the gray day. The Christ madness joke, ha ha, for the father. Tee hee to the sun, somebody dropped a child. Heavenly hosts, heavy the while. Jungle chatter pierced the eve, an animal, acapella shrieking bluely. Merry Christmas, mama. Let my thin rod smack your track again. Won't you flit with me next to the concrete? I'll lay you down in sin. Soft for stupid talk, mama let him in. So soft for stupid talk, a snow job ensued. Mama let him in. Tossing goodwill aside, lay down upside a Chevrolet, overamped at midnight. Can I get a witness, General Motors? Santa Claus did not do right. Who knows this smack yellow gal lying listless in the mist? Somebody dropped a child. Happy birthday, Jesus. Are you picking up the pieces or will they lay broken in the celebration of your birth? Thank you. Thank you, T. And I just put um, a link to more of your poetry and work so people can find it. Um, oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Uh, next up to the mic, I would like to invite uh, Jake Rebecca 
Welcome, Jake. Hi, thanks for having me. Um, this is called A Short List of Baffling Questions. How could this have happened? Cried the hammer to the shattered vase. Why would you do this? Screamed the bleeding lion tamer to the lion. Why must you be so loud? Questioned the covered ear of the alarm. How is this my fault? Demanded the knife of the cut skin. Why is this happening to me? Lamented the hand that grabbed the sword's blade. Why don't you grow? Interrogated the absent farmer into his meager crops. When will this end? Wondered the arm that cranked the wheel. Why do you look to me? Inquired the match to the firewood. What do I need you for? Asked the song of the melody. Why should I love you? Asked the guitar of the string. How do you ever endure? Marvel I at those tormented souls cursed to sit in their living rooms and ponder such daunting and incomprehensible mysteries. Great, thank you for sharing. All right, next up to the mic, I would like to invite Jamal Shaston. Welcome. Hey, Nia. Thanks for having me. Um, I don't really have a poem tonight, but I, I just feel like singing, if that's okay. Sit high, wonder what's the matter. Sit high. Wonder what's the matter with my long time here? Won't you ring, oh hammer, hammer ring? 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 I said sky fell down. Hammering and almost drowned. Hammering the water so high. Hammering, I swam for my life. Hammering, I saved my wife and my kids. Hammering, the first thing I did. Hammering, I sat on my house. Hammering, I needed help somehow. Hammering, won't you ring, oh hammer? Won't you ring, oh hammer, my? Won't you ring, oh hammer? Won't you ring, oh hammer? Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, next up, I would like to invite Melissa Noel. Welcome. Thank you so much, Nia. Um, this is my first time in the open mic, and I'm very excited to be a part um, of this um, wonderful evening. And the poets that um, have shared are absolutely amazing. So thank you, thank you. I'm going to share one piece with you tonight. I've always been round chubby with a cuteness that was hard to ignore. Hair black with curly strands that love water and oil. Bounce like words and sounds and oohs and ahs from the diaspora and roots beyond. I've always been brown, just like my mama. A reminder I couldn't shake nor shimmy away from. My skin tone echoed from the bite of Benin, the Gulf du Benin, Guinea, with hints of ancestors from faraway places of different moons, different suns, and light years. I've always been aware, aware of what people say about me from time to time. I heard all of them, those comments that you can't tuck away in your pocket, you can't put up on your shelf or put in a picture frame. Comments that float in the air, like residue about why your hair is so long for a dark girl. 
why your vocabulary astounds or make white folks say the word articulate before they even have time to think about it. I've always been aware that the color of my skin will speak first no matter what I have to say when I walk in a room. The color of my skin will defend any negative inclinations that conjure or conjecture in my place before I even take a seat at the table. I've always been aware that at times somebody is going to say I am too dark to be anything and therefore I must correct those who are misinformed and educate those whose ignorance have kept them miseducated. You see, for, for what it's worth, I have always known that I am Beautiful. I am more than a dark hue or a simple black girl. If you knew me, you would know that my mind travels to galaxies so far from here, it would take three lifetimes for you to get there and get back. If you knew me, you would know that my learning threshold is vast with capable ideas that can help change the world for the better. If you knew me, you would know that my intellectual capacity is entrenched with science, art, and the melodic intricacies of mathematical equations symbolic of formulas that have been around since ancient civilization. If you knew me, you would see my character, the light in my smile, and the ancestors in my eyes. Just imagine that. If you took it upon yourself to see past my complexion to better understand the complexity of who I am and how I got here. In the meantime, just know, no matter what you decide to do, I am always going to know who I am. Wow, that was, that was beautiful. And someone said in the chat, but so much, much truth. And this whole evening, there's just been so, so much truth um, in everyone's poetry and music. So thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Next up to the mic, I'd like to invite Uzi Ida. Welcome. How you doing? Um, this is my first, uh, well, usually I'm a fly on the wall, but now I figured I'd buzz around a little bit. Um, I used to run track in high school. And uh, when I was watching the footage of Ahmad running, I wondered if he did too. And also if he got this, that annoying cramp in his side when you're out of shape and you're trying to get back into it. This is called Stitch. My favorite part is the exhale. These blocks cradle me like a holster. My knees and fingertips submit to and support the weight on my shoulders. And my feet sprout spikes from my soles. All the better to push on with. Even the sun seems arrested by anticipation. The finger, the bang, the smoke and screams leave me with a cramp in my side. This cramp disrupts my rhythm. It's a frayed stitch, a hiccup. They say holding my hands to the sky will help, but the pain is folding me. But the pain is worse for my sisters, and this king is tired. The finger, the bang, <clears throat> the smoke and screams attempt to reduce me to fists, feet, or fetus. The finger has kept our hands from feeling. The bang has kept our ears from listening. The smoke has kept our eyes from recognition. The screams keep our, li our lips from loving, and this makes no sense. The finger, the bang, the smoke, and screams signal the start and end of my race so many have ran. And we are tired. So tired we have cramps in our sides. So tired that our arms disobey the command of the finger, the bang, the smoke, and screams. 
and then I got kind of two more. Uh, first one is kind of like a preface, and and the second one is uh, more of an apology. Um, they're both called fruit. Rough edges sprung from the ground. I carry sustenance. Warm sinews dance in the wind. You radiate beauty. Don't fly away, I say. And you replied, don't fear the sun. And this last one, um, Fruit Part Two, was written with a dear friend. Um, here it goes. Dear Eve, we are sorry for making you stand in the blame of the fall. Bitter at the marrow, strange fruit bears half truths too reckless to cradle with just one set of hands. Where there is absence, you make harvest of your weary expectations sired by sultry whispers that suffocate. What are you afraid of losing if we put our mistakes to rest? Still enough, I proudly enter the picture that framed you. Yours is the story we should be listening to. Man, that sour nectar dripped aroma on my lips. It rang in my eyes and my heart forgot to love you. Let us hope the apple does fall far from the tree. Thank you so much for sharing those. And it's wonderful hearing you read those out loud as you. So thank you. Thank you. Next up to the mic, I'd like to invite Yeva Johnson. Welcome, Yeva. Thank you, Nia. And thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you to Moad. Um, tonight, I'm going to offer you what I call a poetry appetizer which is just a little bit of music and a short poem, just one. Um, I wrote this poem last week on the anniversary of my father's death. So I'm gonna play first though, so I can, I might not be able to play after. <laughs> is called here's what a five minute Jericho Brown lesson taught me for his secular yard site I've lamented his loss for 24 years my dad was a lion of a man my dad was a lion man oh man he taught poems in prisons on the weekends he spent his own time teaching prisoners poems. One day he collapsed in a diabetic coma. He'd collapsed alone, his diabetes unknown. Hospital staff labeled him homeless, drunk, black man. When hospital staff labeled him a drunk, homeless, black man, he was torn between rhythm and meaning. His doctorate did nothing for him. He had no need for a doctorate when he was torn between rhythm and meaning. He passed solitary hours practicing classical guitar. I remember how he loved playing classical guitar. I've lamented his loss for 24 years. Thank you. Thank you so much, Eva. It's wonderful always to hear both your music and your poetry. And just a teaser for everyone, Yeva will be our feature on July 30th. So please do come back for that. 
to hear more of Yeva's poetry and music. Next up, um, I will, I'm so excited to introduce Tarita McKell. Welcome, Tarita. Hi, Nia. Hi, everyone. Yes, uh, I'm in, in agreement that this is, this is feeding our, our souls. We need to hear all these different voices and, uh, you know, some of us poets have things that we might read or should read and then something says you need to read this. So I'm reading it and I am uh, looking at words. So words are going to be shared and you will take it upon yourself to see how they relate. Especially in today's world with words. Spells, labyrinths, double talk. Sticks and stones, break bones and homes, take fish hook star from eyes. Homonyms, altar, altar, ark, ark, covenant, government, enterprise, enterprise, paradise, paradise, prophets, prophets, sail, sail, worship, Worship, pray, pray, peace, peace, sun, sun, perish, perish, jewel, jewel, good, God. Why alter earth's altar? Silence the ark for an ark. Why douse sacred fire of every kind? Who enters prize for this enterprise? Why did the son of the sun worship with worship? Pray on those who pray for peace. Set sail for sail of peace with paradise for paradise. Government's prophet gamble with prophet's covenant of light. Will jewels perish? in parish of jewels, whose good is sacrificed for concepts of God. And the second is a short. Jen, in the B with Jen we sing. Black balloon boom, bebop, ear, eye drop, Dreams, translucent rings, reverent, effervescent feathers, favor ravens, magic, tether, starshine, glitter, dark red, yellow, green, purple, gold mine. Dance spiral rolls, round roots, ground wire, memories link, imbue, remembering, seeds deed, drum, hearts, lung, tongue, Time, rhythm, sung, uphold, revolutions, evolution, a beat, seat, rocks, steady. Sign, waves, moon, magic, mount, mountains, mystery, bring back the honey bees, please. And swing low, my sweet chariot, let's ride home. Heaven has thrown us in this throne of parallel strings that sing DNA springs that bring children, prophets circulating circuitries, generating generations, yin-yang prophecy, the radicals radiating ishe oluwa kulebajo, ishe oluwa kulebajo. The word no more will not be destroyed in the B ginseng, G-force spiraling, cannot gainsay nor resist the gravity of matter. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Tarita, for both of those. I'm feeling so full right now. 
of so much love and poetry from everyone who shared this evening. I'm also super indecisive because I'm going to share a couple of pieces and then introduce our feature. And I keep going back and forth about which pieces to share. Um, so I'm going to do one I haven't read it in this open mic before. Um, this is entitled, How the Border Cries Itself to Sleep at Night. One, they made me out of nothing. I was soil touching sand, lush, green, life, new roots, twigs, brush. I was beautiful. I was everything. My body was precious earth, alive with worms, seeds, and silt, a medley of hues and textures, wild and untamed, almost as if I was meant to stay that way. My natural cur curves blended beside my sister soil, our ends and our beginnings indistinguishable. We braided rivers between us, caught rainfall in shared valleys. And the wind, she carried both of us upon her tongue. There was no need to tell one of us from the other. We were beautiful. We were everything. Two. Until they came. Not in silence but rather singing the good word of nationhood and promising the safety of somebody's homeland. Their song turned to whisper as they said, how dare this land lie beside this stream, beside this valley, too unified, too comfortable in their own home. So let us make them a new one. They came ready to build. Armed with apathy, they arrived, measuring sticks and hands, the purpose not written across their faces, but upon maps arbitrarily lined with our fate. They came, they promised us the future, and they cut us apart. Drove metal stakes into my flesh, stole my living, breathing body, caged my brown skin between cold concrete walls and renamed me border. Three, but now I answer to empire. I answer to home wrecker. I answer to twin caskets too small to fly flat rate. I answer to surveillance. I answer to national emergency. I answer to the weak leaders who fear, fear the resilient. They renamed me security. But this metal being promises you no safety. Four, I know exactly who authored my new beginning. Five, there was power once in being of the land and being it so entirely, we could be nothing but free. Six, they politicized their man-made line in the sand. I say man because I know power intimately. The feeling of it slipping from my grasp in the name of greatness. How it leaves instead behind barbed wire and bones. How it uproots my home and promises it knows what's best for me how it builds me up to serve their wishes only to turn around and call me culprit. Like I said, I know men intimately because they fear my power. Seven, soil keeps better memory because we are witness to history decomposing its own kin. Eight, and now you decide to walk across me as you should. Remember my living skin was made for walking, for cradling and for carrying. See, land knows how to care for what is both above and within. As you walk across me, remember this wild untamed earth is no stranger to birthing life, 
to sustaining cycles. I have always been the place of beginning and return. As you now walk across us, remember how we came from nothing, but we were everything. So in this life, in another, and the next, I hope you cross us freely. I hope our ends and our beginnings are once more indistinguishable and that we collect rainfall once more in our shared valleys. Thank you. Um, I'm gonna read one quick short one and then introduce our feature. This is very much a work in progress, so it's um, scary sharing this, but here we go. <laughs> the lost souls are bankrupt. Here under the broken sun, we begin the experiments of liberation. Wild speak the dreams of our collective possibility. No silence respectable enough for our grief. There are too many words in the graveyard to praise the fastened tongue. Loudened, we secure our necessary hope. Our question now to the future, what do we do when we get there? But for now, onward, we walk in love, we walk in love, we walk in love. And so with that, I'm excited to introduce our feature this evening, Samuel Getachew. Samuel is a 17-year-old poet and writer from Oakland, California. He is the 2019 Oakland Youth Poet Laureate and a 2020 National Youth Poet Laureate finalist, as well as a three-time Youth Speaks Teen Poetry Slam champion. His work has been published in the New York Times, the Washington Post, and more. Welcome, Samuel. Thank you. Um, and thank you to everybody who read before me, I think. For me, the one of the toughest parts of the pandemic has been that I can't gather in spaces like this as often. Um, and, and I, I think this is the first, yeah, this is the first open mic that I've been to virtually. Um, and I very much miss miss poetry spaces. And so this has been a, a beautiful way to we experienced that. Um, I have a few pieces. Some of them are edited and older. Some of them are, one of them I wrote last night. One of them is in the notes app on my phone. You guys get a, a variety of work today. Um, this first piece is called Brook. Um, I thought it was really interesting that, that Uzi Ida earlier shared a poem inspired by his former track career because this poem is inspired by my former cross country career. Um, and so this poem is called Brook. Step, breathe, step, breathe, step, breathe, step, breathe, step, breathe, run, run, run. It's all you know how to do, isn't it? Can't throw or catch, can't hit a ball with a bat, can't kick a ball into a net, can't do any of the shit real men do, but you sure can run, can't you? Run. Run away on the days when the rain makes the lake swell and overflow. I remember how Akalila wrote my name six years ago. Hammered the Amharic Buruku into Brook with the crudeness of English letters trying to build something they have no business attempting to shape. And I feel myself become water, become a brook, become an overflow, trying to escape something it had no business attempting to be a part of in the first place, become running water, running. Gunshots fire, running, bodies surge at the starting line, running, a boy falls, running, we trample him, running, he gets up anyway, running, his coach yelling from the sidelines, a boy falls, and we trample him anyways, running, nothing is more important than the race, nothing is more important than running on the days when the rain makes the lake swell, I remember how my body cried out, overflowed, cracked at the knees and fractured at the shins, begged me to stop running. On the days when the, rake, when the rain makes the lake swell, I remember how I only speak in excess, only understand how to love too much of a bad thing or too much of a good thing for the wrong reasons. I remember how my body begged me to stop and I kept running anyways, kept running, running, 
the lake cries out, body swollen from too much of a good thing. And the rain laughs, keeps running. A boy cries out, body swollen from too much of a bad thing, but he keeps running anyways. A boy falls and we trample him, still running because nothing is more important than running. Guruku, are we still running? Thank you. Um, the next piece that I'm going to read is actually one that I wrote about a month ago um, and completely immediately forgot about. Um, I was listening to uh, a song by the City Girls, a uh, Miami rap duo that are known for very provocative lyrics, and I just, it, this just came to me. So it's not quite, I don't know if it's quite a poem, but it's, it's a little bit of a ramble. Um, I found it this morning and I liked it, so here we go. I am in love with the vulgarity of rap. In a world that tells us to be timid, I get to hear JT from the City Girls tell me that her pussy is so tight it could smoke a Newport. I get to revel in the basic vices that drive all humans. Lust, greed, ego, power, unsuppressed, unveiled, undenied. To be Black in America is to know that they will never truly respect you regardless. Generational lessons in the fallacies of respectability politics to be so occupied with survival but there's no time left to pretend you are anything but what you are. No time left to pretend you don't want exactly what you want. No time left to do the dance like they do, to speak polite and smile at your enemies. No time left to deny that you aren't so proper. After all, nothing left to lose. And so you are simply honest. No, hip hop is not vulgar. The truth is vulgar. The world is vulgar. Humans are vulgar. Hip hop is just honest. Hip hop is just accurate. Thank you. Um, and while I'm while I'm on that vein, um, this this next poem is sort of a little bit related. It, it kind of gets back at uh, respectability politics. Um, this is called "On Joe Biden and the Exceptional Negro." We've got to recognize that that kid wearing a hoodie may very well be the next poet laureate and not a gangbanger. Joe Biden on the issue of racial profiling and mass incarceration, June 2019. When I receive notice that I am a finalist for National Youth Poet Laureate, I exhale in release. At last, my worth is validated, my life quantified, my entire life I have been told I am exceptional. I'm not like the others, I am different. How thrilling to be raised on the myth of individuality. How misleading, how egomaniacally delightful to know that when the floodwaters come, you will be saved. To walk among the sea of regular Negroes, gangbangers, hood niggas, thugs, super predators, deadbeat baby daddies, a god amongst men, a man amongst boys, a boy amongst slaves. How blessed am I to have an opportunity to prove once and for all that I deserve freedom. Prove that my wrists are too delicate for bondage, my hands too inclined for the pen if I die. I know that they will show my grade point average on the evening news. How blessed am I to have a resume worth mentioning in the headline? How blessed am I to be a viable candidate for martyrdom? How lucky am I to be able to write myself into a place on the porch, a seat under the table? How blessed? to be graced with the possibility of scrounging scraps as they eat above me. How lucky, how lucky, how lucky. Thank you. Um, let's see, how many more am I gonna do? Um, I think I am gonna do two more pieces. Um, I'm gonna give a trigger warning for this next one um, for topics of depression. Um, yeah, so here goes. Um, my, I guess a, a little bit of background. Um, my parents are both Ethiopian immigrants and I grew up speaking Amharic in the house. Um, and like so many, you know, black communities, both diasporic and African-American, we struggle with conversations on mental health. Um, and so this gets into a little bit of that. There's no Amharic word for depression, but still. 
I think about death or dying almost every day, which is perhaps to say that I'm exceptional at resurrection. Perform it as regularly as my poem, perform it as regularly as breathing. How terrifying to think I do not remember what my own bones feel like until they break. To think I do not remember how to feel anything but breaking. Every poem that I write feels like it's my last. Like I'll never remember how to make my fingers do this dance again, but that was even before the depression. Assuming, of course, that there was a before, assuming that my brain has not always looked this way, how vain of me to be thinking of my collapsing mind in terms of how it looks, how culturally appropriate. My ancestors would be proud, I can almost hear them, I can almost hear my father's voice with the force of a nation choking the words treatment, medication, therapy out of my throat, lest someone hears, lest the image is ruined, lest someone dares to question if the man that they made into a god is human after all, lest the god confront the fact that he has created a world doomed to burn on the eighth day. They never talk about what happened to those of us who didn't make it on the ark. They never talk but what happens to the degenerates and the insane, the whores and the vagrants after God has taken his rest. Instead, they tell you to pray, 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 just pray. They never talk about what happens when God talks back. When God tells you he has nothing that can help you. When God tells you that the only thing that can help you is the nothing. When God invites you into the empty, the blank space, what will the family think? What will they think of the family? Please think of the family, please. Please, please, how tempting to be erased, to vanish, for consciousness to disappear permanently. Nothing more final, nothing more definitive, nothing is more absolute, nothing is more reliable. Death is the easy option. That much I have concluded. I think this is going to be my last poem. Um, Thank you guys so much uh, for having me. This is, it, it, it always surprises me how much like reading poems just breeds life back into me. Even even just, you know, like I, I might write them and, and just leave them in my drafts and I might I might hear other people read, but it's, it's a different, it's an entirely different experience to, to feel the words coming out. So thank you for that. It had been a little bit too long and I'm glad to remember what it feels like. Um, I wrote this poem at like 3 a.m. last night, so y'all are getting fresh first draft, no edits, um, which usually scares me, but um, I want to give a trigger warning for police violence on this one, too. Um, and this does not have a title yet. I've forgotten how to write about Blackness outside the context of pain, outside the context of fighting, and isn't that something? To fight so hard to live, you forget the sound of the life you're fighting for. To want liberation so badly, you lose sight of what the liberation looks like. I tried to write a poem for George and Brianna and Tony and Elijah, and none of them made it past a scribble, past a draft, past the passing thought that I could leave the name and the details blank, and this would be the same fucking poem that I've been writing since I was 14 years old, and I'm so tired of explaining why I'm tired, I'm tired of black squares and condolences, of apologetic murderers and kneeling cops, of the Giselle trying to convince the line to eat grass instead, of people trying to give implicit bias trainings to white supremacist institutions. I'm so sick of watching black people die for viral views, of a nation that refuses to consider justice unless it gets to see the bullet enter your heart in real time. I'm tired of yard signs, and street murals, of MLK quotes out of the mouths of the white moderates he fought against and MLK drives in every state of a union that assassinated him and in every major city of a country that will kill you only to give a teary-eyed eulogy at your funeral with its knee still on your children's necks. Thank you guys so much for having me. Um, this, is, this is really fun, I miss, I miss greeting. Um, um, thank you to everybody else who shared. It's, it's been a beautiful evening. Um, yeah, thank you to Mia. Thank you to Ma for everything. Thank you so much for sharing that poetry. And like, I think many people in set, we could just hear more and more. And I really appreciate both the vulnerability and the rawness of some of those very new pieces. 
Um, and what you also said earlier really speaks to this moment too of just the importance of being able to speak these words out loud. And I think a lot of us are finding that, that we can keep a lot of our writing to ourselves and there's power in that, but there's a lot of power in then having an audience and being able to share it with other people. So thank you for that reminder as well. Um, and I'd also just ask you to, if you can put in the chat any ways that people can find more about your poetry or support you in any ways, um, that would be great because I know myself and everyone else wants to, uh, you know, be able to support more. So now we are going to enter our second half of the open mic this evening. This has just been wonderful. Um, I, I know I already said it before, but I'm still feeling very full of life and joy and feeling very uplifted hearing everyone's words this evening. Um, so to kick off our second half of the open mic, I'd like to invite Kisei Natsuki up to the mic. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to read um, two pieces. The first one is Untitled, um, and that's the one I'm going to start with. And thank you very much for having this uh, open mic. It's, it's very healing listen to, listening to everyone. Okay, here goes. The absence of home feels like an absence, not a temporary passage through which gifts of discovery lie but an absence marked by an ocean unsettled, casting unfettered ship in violent motion, back and forth on fitful seas, never reaching land, though disembarking to shore. Heart embedded like feet sinking into dirt, body adrift, sailing without mast and sails, following a compass mismatched to the weather and these stars. Eyes close as night draws near, fatigued by the billow of emerald blue waters and torrid winds, always beneath a howling moon, seeking a plot of land chosen by my desire that welcomes me and says, this is home. Whether people or place, indistinguishable both from hearth and fire, tending the hot cocoa before bedtime of my childhood, signaling refuge like a flag planted on, planted on ground in my soul, reaching land. This absence, not empty, not hollow, not shallow, from unfilled excavation, but full. An absence full of stories of changing lands, bodies written upon by history's fountain pens, blackened with calligraphers' ink spanning centuries. Tales of flesh and meaning transcribed into footprints, constantly moving as labor and reproducing body bellies in always foreign spaces, made alien by ancient pains sung through conquests under which my sepia and amber canvas is dictated to stay in places I renounce, full of affirmation of self. This absence of home, whether people or place, marked by broad, loud strokes on almost white acid-free cotton, red on sable hairs, mast cells healing wound, defending petition for safety, strengthening soul is full of stories of self-love, manning uncharted ships, sovereign to heart in changing seas, biding tides of generations struggle to wield a freedom amidst inscription and instructions to walk slowly backwards in a sign garb, knowing the pace of each footstep until door is reached, exiting to one's commanded permanent place. Home is missing, but not lost or empty. This absence is full. Stories, love, transgressions that speak clarity, actions that hum serenity, quiet that bows to passion, charting course beneath this ship, compass mismatched, current forceful, leading as mast and sail, the journey and destination home. The second one does have a name and it's much shorter. Um, it's called Guessing the Shapes of Clouds. 
Tomorrow's dawn I cannot see, but imagine it will be hailed by a pale blue sky littered with a lavender ocean of flowers as its landscape. White clouds treat eyes to spirited imagination as I look up, absorbing the hope of the unknown moments that will follow. Tears retreat to watering holes for unborn flowers, their seeds germinating maybes. Light streams through lashes to rest on eyes and cheek as God's kiss reminds to hope, to wish, to give the dreams to vacant skies so he can fill it and surprise me. That's it. Thank you very much. Wow, those were beautiful. So wonderful to hear your work and your writing. Thank you. Thank you. Next up to the mic, we have Zakia G.E.K. Part. Welcome, Zakia. Thank you, Nia. Can you hear me? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for having this uh, forum. I'm so appreciating it more and more and more. So, so good, good to be here to hear all the beautiful poetry from all the poets. I have two pieces, and my first is entitled Corporate America. This disease, known as corporate America, is not new, but has become a phenomenon. The disease always existed since enslavers stole and inhabited this land from indigenous people. Corporate America camouflages its inhumane greed over and over again, disguising it in different ways, but it's all the same only a minority gains. The transparency is so very plain. Being in view and open sight, the people won't suspect deviance outright. Spouting propaganda and lies, instilling fear to abort the people's plan, organizing to abolish the disease, corporate America greed that impoverishes, preventing the people from knowing the truth. Will the people give in, give out, give up? Or will the people continue to rebel, resist, revolt? Okay, so my second piece, I just want to say that um, that piece is quite old, but it seems that it's renewed over and over again. My second piece is a piece that I actually wrote when I was having an MRI. Um, and I have, it's entitled MRI, and my second title is My Reasonable Imagination. It's about what's going on in our country and very prevalent here in Oakland. As we walk outside our doors, we see people that don't have anywhere to live. Am I a misfit? A popped up, propped up mannequin? A muffled woman? A black doll? A silent observer? A speechless participant? An innocent bystander? Or an unenthusiastic gopher? During my confinement in this prison, I imagine how relieving it will be when I am free, free to move around, free to speak, free to laugh, free to cry, free to think of more than escaping from this physical and mental confinement. In my seclusion, my reasonable imagination keeps me from thoughts I consider unreasonable. Thoughts of me screaming until the volume of my screams shatter and crumble the walls of this transparent prison that cripples me. Thoughts that I am being transported to a different place and time. And in this place, I will be embraced 
not rejected. I will be loved, not hated. I will have peace, not war. I will have equality, not injustice and racism. I will have truth, not lies. I will have freedom, not imprisonment or the illusion of freedom. Pondering, I realize these are indeed reasonable thoughts. So I embrace all of my thoughts. My reasonable imagination acknowledges and understands this six by 12 by 12 cardboard box is symbolic and coincides to the space I inhabit here on planet Earth. Thank you all. Thank you so much, Sakia. I always You're welcome, Leah. Hearing your pieces every week, it's wonderful. Thank you. The reason that I really enjoy these open mics is that especially now that we're virtual is that we're able to have folks gather from all over the place where previously we wouldn't also just because the world is so small and all the worlds get to come together in this space this is just to preface the next person i'm inviting up val thomas who was one of my literature professors in college and so i'm excited to have you in this space welcome val i welcome nia thank you thank you thank you for having me good to see everyone I, i'm very i'm just soaking it in and very grateful um and it's so good to see you again and yeah more later <laughs> on that um i'm gonna do two pieces and the first one is called outdoors uh i've been thinking a lot about just everything that's going on of course but in particular about that that old time meaning of outdoors that we used to use in my family. When we come to Memphis, we didn't have anything, no people. I guess we was what you might call outdoors. That's something my grandmother Molly would say. In this home, you and I stand divided, always apart on opposite sides of a line. This line from inside takes us outdoors. We're no longer part of each other, forever alone. Only our differences keep us company. The homeless are in my home. Division rules the shelters, but there is no shelter. Hypocrites pose as healers. Police double as executioners. Lawyers advise, it's okay. All the lines conflict. Angles hide questions and shadowy curves of political language. All the lies connect in two-faced lies. I break the line. I circle back, recall home, recall the grandmother, first mother, she backwoods, she forest, she savannah, and the ocean of memory who gave us birth. Look everywhere for people who are your shelter, become trees, shade one another, be somebody rock outdoors. And the next poem, uh, Samuel, reminded me this probably needs a trigger warning. I feel like I need a trigger warning when I read it. Um, this is about a friend of mine whose name is Jessica. So she's a person that inspired this poem. She gave me a prayer a few years ago that uh, means a lot to me and that I love. And I, so I'll quote the prayer. Um, there's three quotes to preface this poem. It's called Jessica's Teaching. The first quote is, from the Dalai Lama. Our prime purpose in this life is to help others. And if you can't help them, at least don't hurt them. The second quote is from Fukiao Bunseki, a writer who I love. Anytime there is a break in a pattern, that is the ancestors talking to you. And this last quote is uh, Jessica, who is AKA Buddha mom. When somebody is doing something for the good of all, pray this. I am connected to that spirit and that energy. I'm a part of that healing. They are doing good. Let me be a part of that. 
Yesterday, I came to an intersection, saw a commercial stock truck go by, and as it passed, a steer's face straining toward the small sliver of open space at the top of the sidewall, maybe 12 inches left, left open to keep life breathing until it reaches the killing floor a quarter mile up the road. A face almost in silhouette with sacred horns, yes, sacred, echoing the shape of a crescent moon and with eyes desperate to live outside the doom they sense is coming. No, not coming, the doom they are being driven into, to be thrown into dissolution, helpless, and only understanding all is become agony. The cow's eyes were panicked already, its angular face, soft muzzle, which is undoubtedly velvety, warm, gentle, strained to reach the open outside where life is. The cattle felt slaughter closing in. They smelled death on the electric breeze. I don't want to imagine what the vibration of tires underfoot feels like on the way to being butchered alive. The heart pounding inside young bones meant to live and harm no one forever. Everyone has mouths to feed, so these agonies sound necessary. I'm complicit in these mechanisms. I play my part, but I don't want this constant dissection of lives in the grinding jaw of it's just the way it is. I felt despair for a helpless, harmless one. My compassion is less than useless. Compassion is breaking and processing. The crossroads will eat you whole and spit you out. It is a non-place of quickly passing through on the way to fate and every place, nothing at all and all. The crossroads is whirling in time and out of time. The truth at the crossroads is a moment's glimpse of what we are and what can be. Here is a prayer for the crossroads. May the possibility of being otherwise bring balance into this world. Awakening, may we honor spirit in each other. Remembering, may we hear our ancestors. May we become the break that makes love come forth anew. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much, Val. Thank it's you. Hearing your writing and also getting to see. <coughs> Thank you. It's a great gathering. Thank you. Next up to the mic, we have Anthony Fangery. Welcome. Welcome, Anthony. Hello, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, it's been a really strange uh, time. I came back home to Southern California. And um, it's a really rural town. I don't know if y'all saw it on the news the other day. It's called Norco, California. And there was a big counter protest yesterday. And I saw my, who was my mechanic at some point flipping off protesters. And it was kind of kind of ugly. But uh, anyway, this is a poem called Inland Empire, um, kind of about the Inland Empire. But yeah, thank you. Let me uh, find it. Um, in an empire, I come from a place where learning to roll a blunt that burns evenly is a rite of passage. And breaking down your first pound informs your stature. I come from a place where seduction is taking forever to respond to a text message. Where we make them simmer and we split the bill at dinner laughing at a chivalric past. I come from a place where love is an eight ball of coke, sips from a flask and holding hands until the acid fades. I come from a place where there is always ecstasy at prom and smoking is a response. I come from a place where we know cops are swine at birth. Virginity is a curse and we treat that shit like we stole it. I come from a place where learning to roll a blunt is a rite of passage. And when we fuck, we say we're smash. And I come from a generation of dining and dashing, rainbows and stashing a Mac-10 under your bed, calling oral head money bread and mama has to eat her pills before she microwaves dinner tonight. I come from a place where you steal your mom's Xanax to buy lunch. I come from a place where you sell your mom's Xanax to buy lunch. You slang weed for dog food and burn roaches until your face turns blue. I come from a place where learning to roll a blunt that burns evenly is a rite of passage. And poetry is just dew drops and daisies. I come from a place where writing is a secret covered in blunt ashes and you hide it like a corpse. I come from a place where poetry is just dewdrops and daisies. Dewdrops and fucking daisies. Sex is amazing. War is a business and the rest is history. I come from a place where you don't vote. Ecstasy comes by the boat. 
and you sell that shit like you stole it because you did steal it. I come from a place where you sell drugs to get by, you fuck friends to get high, and it goes on and on and on. I come from a place where we blaze trails and shit on paths. We can give a fuck about math because we have calculators. Stairs are lazy escalators, and we killed off God. I come from a place where you sell your mom's Xanax to buy lunch. I come from a place where you steal your mom's Xanax to buy lunch. You stay up late because she's crying over your dad while you watch the Brady Bunch, pretending to give a fuck about Marsha, Marsha, Marsha. I come from a place where we don't make eye contact unless you were trying to fuck or you were trying to fight. I come from a place where we don't sleep at night, fly kites, or snort Vicodin. No, we drink it. We drink that shit like sugar in youth. I come from a place where poetry is just dewdrops and daisies. Dewdrops and fucking daisies. Escalators are lazy. Sex is amazing. Ecstasy is a rice. Abortion is a blessing. And plan B is always plan A because we don't fuck with rubbers. I come from a place where I'll die too young. I come from a place where I'll die too young and my friends are strung on the streets like instruments and war is a business. I come from a place where war will never end. Elections are just a reality TV show and war is just a business. I come from a place where poetry is just dewdrops and daisies and mama won't look me in the eyes anymore. So I learned to roll a blunt that burns evenly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Anthony, for that piece. Thank you. Happy to share. Yeah. Next up to the mic, we have Ryan Ninako. Welcome, Ryan. Hi, thank you. Um, yeah, thank you, Moad, and thank you, Mia, for putting this on. Uh, I've been watching quite a bit the past couple of mics, but I figured I'd try to read something. Um, so I guess I'll read two pieces. Um, the first one is um, for my great grandfather who I never met. Um, so I figured I'd write a poem for him. Um, so this is called For Gomkichi. And yeah, okay. <clears throat> for Gomkichi. I never knew you outside of a grocery, a collection of gold keys, Gold coins kept clean, untouched and undocumented. I never knew you. Jumped ship, plunged deep into Pacific blues from Mexico by way of Peru. You who could not keep from the mountains, worked in the fields, wielded a ladder to pick yellow among the trees, dreams of a family sprouting across a lattice you built on the roof of a building and again inside the barracks of a prison rose from the concrete, the very definition. I never knew you ordered a train car of rice before the bombing, stripped snake skin for medicine, staked to a blank wall as if its very scales might bear fruit, as if the desert answered. I never knew you through the train, thought the train might stop dead in its tracks to leave an exoskeleton or a translucent paper-like skin to drift windless amongst all the nothing. I never knew you, and yet here we are, finding each other again. Uh, so that's that. Um, it's very rough, so it's going to go through an editing process, but um, uh, I'm going to read uh, one more. Um, this is pretty new. Um, it's called Tiger, and um, yeah, early, well, I guess this would have been about a month ago, um, <laughs> there were reports of a, a tiger that was let loose in the city of Oakland, um, <laughs> and um, uh, this was also during, you know, the beginning of the uprising, um, and uh, I thought I'd write a poem about it, uh, so yeah, it's called Tiger. It is said a tiger was let loose in the city of Oakland at night. I'm a cat chasing after nothing, or I'm running toward your absence. My mind running on thick paws, nature kicking in all four with what force to bear stripes across the back. You know the story where I'm burning post gold fur everything. You know how they got there on the back of another's imagination. There's a tiger. 
I don't know for certain. Claws over cages. Move swift down broken streets, eyes glowing a sunset, jaw unhinged, car alarmed acknowledging its presence, specter of courage, zoom in, that's love dripping from its lips, zoom out, that's its body ignited, does it or does it not exist? Outside, I take in the night, air, a soft wind, passing through my coat, a small bird lands itself perpendicular, and the answer is no. The tiger set free is a myth, and yet I can't help but believe it. Its body already a burnt image in motion. Thank you all. Thank you so much for both of those pieces. They're both very beautiful in their own unique ways. So thank you. Uh, next up to the mic, uh, we have Indy Rishi uh, uh, Singh. Welcome. Hello. Oh my gosh. Thank you. Um, awesome. So I'm going to try something different this time. Um, I really loved everything everybody's done. It's been so beautiful. Uh, thank you. Um, I'm going to uh, play this instrument right here. Uh, this is called a Bansuri flute. It's from the Himalayas. It's actually literally a piece of bamboo from the Himalayas. What I'm going to ask everybody to do is, and you don't have to do it. You don't have to do it at all. You actually could totally ignore everything I'm saying and do whatever you want. Or I'm going to invite you to breathe. You remember that thing? Do you remember that thing that we used to do? A lot of, <laughs> a lot better than we do now, you know? So, you know, it's an opportunity to uh, uh, breathe while I play this. And so for me, this is my poetry. Like when I play this, there's words, I hear them, I hear, I hear melody and you might hear it too. I don't know, um, something to think about when, while you're listening. But really what I would love for you to do as I play this. <clears throat> okay, so while I play this, I would really love for you to think about your breath in three parts. Think about the inhalation, Think about the pause and think about the exhalation. And if you're sitting down or if you can lay down or whatever you're doing right now, in a even if you're driving a car, if you just sit straight, like just like make your posture straight, like think about your spine, like, you know, base your spine to the top of your head, making one line, you're straight. It's good, good, helps you with breathing, right? And so the inhalation, you breathe into your belly and then you pause, just like gently pause and then exhale, like long exhale, as long as you can and then start again and just try that. Just Really simple, long breaths. See how long you can make a breath is what I'm asking you. <laughs> All right, here we go. <clears throat> Really quickly now, as you're breathing long and deep breaths and you feel really good and calm, just take a moment with these last couple of deep breaths and just think about how and what you're doing when you take a breath. Think about how it allows you to refocus, to become better, stronger. Your immune system gets better, your cardiovascular system, everything, your whole body getting better, the better you breathe. And just be embodiment of that. Think about that for a moment. Think about how you are actually becoming healthier and happier just by breathing better. And then, if you can, if you even want really quickly, quickly, if you want to drop a little mind note and visualize what is it you're trying to do in the world? What are you trying to accomplish? Where do you foresee the world becoming a better place? Let's actually visualize that while we breathe. What if we did that? What if we did that before we did something? Ah, 
Maybe you might feel good. You might smile from that. Oh, so nice to think about what's possible while we breathe. Hmm. Ah. Whew. All right. One last breath. Take a big deep breath in if you want. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. And a big sigh. Ah. <laughs> okay, hold on. You got to do it again. Okay, you do it. Now you know. Take a big deep breath in. Hold it, hold it, hold it. And big sigh. Ah. <laughs> it feels so weird when I hear it just myself. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you. Please take your time to come back to the present moment. You're back on July 2nd, back in this amazing open mic. Thank you so much um, for holding this space. And let's keep breathing, everybody, okay? Let's share with other people how to breathe. Because if we all breathe better and we breathe, and if we breathe together, holy moly, what's, what, what can we accomplish when we breathe together? Thank you. Thank you so much for that grounding, breathing work um, and your beautiful music. I appreciate that. So we're going to round out our open mic with uh, one more, uh, I think one or two more readers this evening. Um, so next up, I'd like to invite our Chanel up to the mic. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Thank you. I will be reading from um, a poem that I wrote. It's actually from my poetry book that's available on Amazon and on Etsy. And it's called No Allegiance. I don't pledge allegiance to a flag because it never pledged allegiance to me. For the past week, I've wakened angry. My allegiance is to the one that gave his blood, not taking blood. I won't take my hat off. I refuse to utter those words. The only reason why I stand is to stretch my legs, improving circulation. I like the Star Spangled Banner song, the Whitney Houston version. My ancestors chose to sacrifice their lives even when the military was segregated. When the smoke cleared, no matter the skin color, all of the blood that was shed was red. I live in an at-will state, the city part that uses street lights, where my life, liberty, and pursuit of happiness can be sold if the price is right. Country police question me for working while Black. I lack any sympathy. I won't pledge allegiance to a flag because they never pledged allegiance to me. Many of these professional football players have bachelor's degrees, masters, and doctorates. The shut up and play mentality treats them like a slave trade or meat market. I enjoy the protests. That's what my uncles fought for. Let their voice count. Let them use their platform. I've had white men sit on the side of the road, waiting until I get off of work and attempting to kill me because I'm one less blackie trying to live the American dream. I love and live in this neighborhood, but I'm not attracted to the drug dealers. I'm okay with rejecting the druggies, pill poppers, weed heads, and drunkards. How dare I not allow society to objectify, sexualize, and degrade me, a human being. I won't pledge allegiance to the flag because it never pledged allegiance to me. Thank you. Mm, that's important truth. And I think that that is a good note to, to close us on. Thank you so much for sharing this evening. And I want to thank everyone, <clears throat> excuse me, everyone for sharing in this space <clears throat> and creating community together every time we have this. It is so refreshing to hear so many varieties of voices and experiences in this space. Um, and so with that, uh, because July has so many weeks, we will actually be doing this open mic three times. Um, so it's happening every other week. The next open mic will be on July 16th with our feature Darius Simpson. Uh, following that two weeks later, we'll have our open mic on July 30th uh, with our own Yeba Johnson featuring. So I encourage everyone here this evening to continue coming to these programs, continue coming to open mic, um, check out our website, moadsf.org, for all of our other program series. Um, and I believe Elizabeth has also put in information about supporting us um, 
if you are able to give any donation of any amount, it's truly appreciated. Um, you can either donate on our website or by phone by texting the number 56512 and typing MOAD SF. Um, so please, again, thank you everyone for being here and sharing. Um, continue to support and support one another. Um, and with that, have a good rest of your evening. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. See you later. Thank everybody. It was amazing. Oh that was so nice. Tonight was really nice. It's, it's it healing. Was. Love nice. the breathing. Nice and just love at everything. So wow. It. Wow. Thank you. Bye bye, Norma. Thank you. Power, bye. power, power. Power. <laughs> people thank power. You. Positive yeah. people power. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Oh, uh, we needed to breathe tonight. <laughs> yes. 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 Okay. Bye now. Thank you. Bye. 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 And y'all stay Thank safe in Cali out there. Oh yeah. We're working <laughs> on it. Around the country. <laughs> Bye, Nia. Bye, Val. Bye. Bye, Nia. Bye. Bye, Nia. Thank you for being here. Thank you.